Hey everyone, it's Sam Mackay here. Today we're gonna to go over how you can create automated forecasts from historic data. Now this is, this is really common within businesses, right? You need to create forecasts, you need to create budgets, but in a lot of cases, you know, it's gonna be derived from your historical results, your historical information. And so I'm gonna show you here how you can really quickly go and grab historic data, consolidate it, and then create a forecast from it that still actually aligns to your entire data model. And so what we can see here is obviously we've got uh, sales last year, two years ago, three years ago, and then I've got, from that information, I've been able to project it forward and create a sales forecast from the average of all of those numbers. And still, it's still aligned to the data model here. So we can see you know, by product what our, what our expected forecasts are per day or cumulatively, for example. But I could bring anything in here. I could bring in my location. I could bring in my customers, so on and so forth. It's a really, really cool technique. Just a reminder, if you want to download this resource, you can. It just requires a small investment. You can uh, find the location of that uh, down in the link below. Okay, so let's jump into it. So let's jump into it. Let's start from scratch, and I'm going to show you how I actually did this. So if I come back into a model with nothing in it, I'll, I'll just show you that we've got, say, some sales information already. We've got our sales calculation here. So now all I've got to do is, so I'm at the end of 2017, right? I need to find a way to project it forward. I want to project forward to 2018. I want to work out well, what are my sales, uh, what are going to be my forecasts in 2018. So if you see in this uh, filter down on the right hand side here, I've actually filtered for only 2018, right? So we're only looking at 2018 here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another measured table and I'm going to, I'm going to call this sales forecasting. So I'm just going to create this really quickly. If you can get into the habit of creating these measure tables, I certainly would. It uh, benefits immensely um, you know, in, in terms of organizing your model. Okay, so inside of here, I'm going to go step by step. I'm going to create this forecast. Actually, first I'll get my date out here. Uh, and uh, and I'll, first of all, we've got to project, obviously, we've got to project last year's sales. So say we're at the, the, the right at the end of 2017, we've got to project 2017's numbers forward, right? And so we can do that actually really easily with time intelligence functions. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go, I'm going to call the sales um, LY, and I'm going to go calculate by total sales. And you know, you could obviously do the same for any any of your metrics, but we're just going to work on sales today. And I'm going to use date ad. So date ad's um, by far my favorite time intelligence function just because of the flexibility you have. And I'm just going to jump back one year here. And all I'm going to do is my interval of year and enter. Now, if I grab this and drag them into the table, you're going to see, well, we are now projecting forward all of the data from 2017. So we've got our first a column of information on the three that we're actually going to uh, we're going to calculate today. So I'm just going to finalize this as a measure table. And now I've got my fork, my sales forecasting measure table here. Okay, so now we've got to jump back. We've we've got to jump back two years, right? As well, because we want to we want to work out. You know, this could be done very differently, obviously, but in this case, you know, in this example, we're going to jump back three years. So to do to go to the second year, I'm going to copy. The, uh, the, the pattern we just used, I'm going to paste it, and then I'm just going to make these small adjustments, change the change the name of the measure, change the parameter inside of there, and now we're now we're projecting out sales from two years ago, and I'm going to do exactly the same for three years, three years ago, and then all I've got to do is just change that inside of there, and. Now we've got three years of information that we can now create into our forecast. Pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how how I would maybe even do this. So I would do this slightly differently, and I would I would use variables instead. I just wanted to show you those steps first of all. Uh, actually, I've just dragged in the wrong one. I just realised. But what I would do is I would create this one measure. So check this out. I would just go. Let's call this sales forecast, for example, and. Instead of creating three different measures, well, we're all we're all working up to try and achieve exactly the same thing. So I'm actually going to put these inside of variables, and I'm going to go sales ly, 
and then I'm just going to I can, just, I can probably type it out quicker than going and copying and pasting and so if you think about it we're doing exactly the same thing here right exactly the same thing but instead instead we're actually going to just put all three of these in, inside of variables and I, I highly recommend this why create three measures when you don't need to right so I can just go two years ago here and we'll go three years ago here and then we can jump down and go return and here is where we can put in the logic so I can say okay well divide we've got three years of data so I'm going to go uh, sum up sales last year plus sales two years ago and plus sales three years ago. Actually, now we've got to make sure that we grab the correct variable. And then I'm going to divide that by three. I'm going to put my alternative result as zero. And then I push enter. And then check this out. Now we have, now we have the sales forecast. How cool is that, right? So this is now an average of all of these three. Now, when I was doing this, I was thinking, well, we could actually uh, improve this a bit because obviously, you know, if your forecasts are just going to be the same as three the last three years, and that's pretty disappointing, you probably want to have sort of some factor in there or something like that where you're actually increasing things, or or you might want to say, well, I actually want to increase, um, you know, I, I want to I forecast to showcase a five percent growth rate, and so I could just put a factor in there. And then all I would need to do really would be to times that by the factor, and then now we've got obviously you know uh, our forecast, but we've we've increased it um, based on you know obviously we want things to improve, so so we've done just that. Um, you know we've put our we've put our targets you know and adjusted it for that five percent growth rate. Okay, so obviously now if you think about it, we can turn this into visualizations. So we've now got a uh, a sales forecast that. Uh, showcases how much we need to make every single day to reach our forecast. But what we can also do is we can put this inside a cumulative total pattern. So I'm going to I'm going to call cumulative forecast, and I'm just going to quickly do this. So I go calculate and then sales forecast. And then we're going to go filter all selected by date. So I'm just going to go through this quickly. I go through cumulative totals in a number of other videos. Okay, so then we don't need the reference to this measure table. Okay, so now I can actually t put this down here and make it a cumulative total. And you see now we've got a cumulative forecast that we could measure up cumulatively versus our actual results as soon as we got into 2018. Now the coolest way about doing this in this in this sort of fashion is that it links up to the data model, right? So your forecasts, your forecasts now can be filtered by anything in the data model because they're derived from historical information that sits within the data, you know, a table within the data model. So I could go and very easily go and filter by product name here. I could go and grab my sales forecast for the product name, and all of a sudden I've got my forecast for my products. So it, it remains to be, you know, there, there's, there's, you can debate whether this is actually, um, you know, this is actually reality because, you know, a lot of times you, you might think, well, you know, we'll sell our new products better than our old products or something like that. But, um, but anyway, the, you can certainly, the, that's the cool thing about this, if, that, if this is the way that you actually want to forecast or you forecast within your business. And so now I could say select product um, 63 here, which has got our highest forecast. And now you can see, well, we can, and if I just change the filters here, we can see, well, this is how much we need to, you know, sell per day for this product, or this is the cumulative result. Um, this is the cumulative forecast for this, just this very product. Okay, so I'll wrap things up there. There's, there we've, we've gone through a lot there. We've gone through time intelligence, cumulative total patterns, but this is I, I've seen this asked a number of different times in comments and, and forums, etc. And I just uh, wanted to showcase how how you know, it's relatively straightforward if you think about it. Um, how how you can get to a forecast from historical information. So hopefully you enjoyed the content. Uh, if, if, if you did, really appreciate a like on the video. Uh, also, don't forget to subscribe if you want to want to see um, or, or view fresh Power BI content every a weekday. 
So we're uh, putting out lots of lots of fresh content about a variety of practical applications of Power BI. I'm huge on that. Um, so hopefully you, benef- you benefited from this. Can you know can implement this in your own environments? Um, find some way to utilize some of the techniques that we've gone through today. Uh, wish you all the best with it. Uh, until next time, I'll speak to you then. Cheers.